Hello and welcome to a Wednesday drawing session with Frank Cho. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. Today I'm going to work on a sketch cover. Um, I have a huge pile of sketch covers in my studio and I decided to kill two birds with one stone and show you guys uh, how I do a head sketch or a head drawing on a sketch cover. So today I'm going to draw Mar from Sin City. He's that big, hulking, uh, craggy-looking uh, hitman from uh, the comic book. So the thing about um, uh, Marv is you have to make him look very, very uh, menacing and scary. So so uh, when you draw a head, you, same as always, you start with an oval and you put in the guidelines uh, for the for the, the middle of the face and where the eyes and mouth would go. I don't put in the, the nose guideline because um, it's it always come out weird to me. I don't know why. So I, I've, I tend to draw the nose a little too big. Uh, so it really makes everything look, uh, the face look elongated sometimes. So I just never put in the guideline for the, for the, uh, for the nose. So I just put guidelines for the eyes and the mouth and then somewhere in the middle, I just draw the nose. So anyway, so um, for Marv, you have to make him look very menacing. So you have, he has a lot of scars on his face uh, and he has this big square jaw and this big pronounced nose, uh, which kind of like flows directly from his forehead into, um, into his nose. So it's not really a nose. It's almost like a beak, like a like a beak on a on a bird. So, so there is no uh, a dent uh, between the eyes, uh, where the forehead ends and the and the nose starts. There's no dent in it. It's just a straight slope. Um, so you gotta keep mindful of that, and also make sure you have this big pronounced jaw. Um, because I think uh, Marv is supposed to be like about seven foot tall, and just like a human wrecking ball. Um, and so the so the thing about that you really have to know about Frank Miller's Sin City is uh, he did a great job of uh, really emphasizing the light and shadow in the in the comics, and it's basically uh, it's his um, uh, I guess his love of film noir kind of thing which is just just light and shadow so so in this piece i i try to make sure um we honor that by uh casting this dramatic upshot light so the light source is from the the lower left hand side and so with that in mind i start uh putting everything in the shadow so all the stuff on the lower left hand side will be light and everything on the opposite side will be dark. So it's just it's a very simple explanation. Um, and then also, uh, like in the movie and the comic book, um, Marv is uh, one of Marv trademark is he's just covered in a Band-Aid because he's always constantly getting into fights and his face is constantly cut up. Uh, so uh, put in the, the Band-Aids is a, is a, is a classic uh, Marv trademark. And also his cigarette. So, so he has this beautiful flat top um, um, that uh, you need to be mindful of. And then his cigarette and then that dramatic lighting. And also the trench coat uh, because Marv loves his trench coat. So make sure you ha he has a really nice London fog uh, tr uh, trench coat with the collars popped up. Uh, so here I am. So I actually uh, did all the pencils and it turned out pretty good. And at this point, I decided to ink it. Uh, so this overall drawing and inking process took um, 25 minutes. Uh, I couldn't believe how fast I drew, uh, penciled and inked this thing. Uh, so you're looking at half speed. So I basically uh, reduced it down to about roughly 10 minutes uh, while the whole thing took roughly uh, about 25 minutes. So you're seeing the entire drawing process at a uh, half speed um, or or basically uh, 50, it's sped up 50% and um, again at this point you know the, you know I, I got all the facial landmarks down and I got my uh, micron brush pen and just start um, 
just blacking everything out. So, so you know, so this is where you really need to know how to draw the face and where all the uh, the anatomical landmark uh, is. And uh, and the inking process is actually fairly uh, straightforward and easy. Uh, if you have a very strong and tight pencil, uh, like here, or well, semi-tight anyway, uh, the inking process should go really, really fast. Um, and here I am just, uh, just inking everything in. And so, like, uh, Frank Miller always, back in the 80s anyway, uh, did a really great job of doing this beautiful um, under uh, the underlit light source. And, um, and that's, I'm trying to bring that into that uh, to, to kind of, like, bring that, um, that under light that Frank Miller used to do uh, really nicely during his Daredevil run in the 80s. And so, so the uh, the brush pen it it's not as dark as I hope to be. Um, so eventually, I guess later on, I might go back in uh, and ink it with the um, with uh, with my Indian ink, super black speedball, super black Indian ink, which has a really nice opaque uh, blackness to it. So, but you know, the, um, but the micron. Uh, brush pen um it will do the job in a pinch um it's not the blackest ink um but it actually um is a very uh very good uh pen to use because it has a very flexible uh brush nib um and so you can get the thin and thick line very nicely um and um so here i am so once i inked it I'm going back with a uh, Micron uh, Pigma pen. Uh, this is 05, and then start kind of feathering out the, uh, the 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 shadow and light to kind of give it a more of a uh, slightly smoother transition from light to dark, um, so it doesn't look too jarring. And again, uh, I, I prefer Micron Pigma pen because uh, it has a very flexible nib, uh, which behaves like a brush. So if you press down really hard on it, uh, you'll get a thicker line. And if you ease up the pressure, you get a thinner line. Uh, so, um, so I prefer, a lot of people think I, I, I you know, I uh, ink with a brush, but I don't, it's just all pen, a micron pigma pen. And, uh, and it, it behaves like a, um, and it behaves like a brush. So once I have everything down, um, they, the micron pigma pen actually draws, uh, dries, fairly fast. So once I dry, um, the thing about when you erase the pencil mark, it also, uh, it kind of lightens the, the ink line. Um, so this is uh, kind of like the finishing touch. So I go back in and kind of like re-darken areas that the, the, the eraser kind of like um, picked up while erasing the pencil line and also erase, uh, kind of erase the, uh, the ink line. So it's best to, you know, after you finish inking and erasing, uh, you let it dry a little bit more and then go back and start um, adding in a little bit more details and um, and redarken some of the areas that got, uh, got that, that became uh, lighter with the, during the inking process. And also, you know, so there I am just, just putting a little more finishing touches. And again, it's very straightforward. Um, and you know, and uh, and this was actually a pretty fun piece to do, you know, just a little bit of just adding the finishing touches. Uh, and yep, and there it is, the final touches, a little bit of whisker, the final touches that make make the make the character kind of like come alive. And here I am putting uh, now I'm finished and putting my little signature in the corner. And there you go. Marv from Sin City.